Good morning, explorers, and welcome back to another episode of the Aquarium Online Academy. My name is Ty, and I'm coming to you live from the Aquarium of the Pacific here in Long Beach. I'm also joined by my wonderful friend Jen, who's been working all the magic that you see behind us here. Now, along our journey today, we are going to make a really cool craft together. But before we get into any of that, we're going to explore some different types of animals. And as we go along today, welcome to Texas Live. We have a number down here on screen. That's 562-286-1838. And that way, if you would like, you can share any of your observations that you have. You can um, ask any questions you might have about different animals. And also, if you do decide to make a craft along with us, we would love if you would text us a picture of it at the very end. Now, if you're watching this um, afterwards when we're not live here today, you can also use that email down below, live at lbaop.org, or if that method is just easier as well sure to answer any of your questions or again we'd love to see your crafts if you need some extra time to finish them up afterwards all right my friends so let's go ahead and talk about the animals that we are going to explore today we are going to be looking at some animals that are actually here behind me so why don't we get our brains warmed up as scientists and just make some observations so you watching along with me right now, you indeed are a scientist here today because what scientists do is we are curious. We ask questions. We explore the world around us. In this case, all the cool stuff that will be behind me and also share with each other. You're welcome to share with me or if you're watching with somebody, you can share with them too. And then hopefully by the end, we're going to learn a lot about some really cool animals. So let's get our brains warmed up. Go ahead and take a look at these animals here behind me and see if, what you notice. Now, as a scientist, the things you notice can be anything. It can be colors that you see. It can be any shapes that you spot on some of these animals. Or maybe if you've seen some of these animals before, maybe you recognize them um, from things that you've learned before. So what are some things that you notice? Now I know as I'm looking here at this um, habitat, this home for these animals, I see a lot of colors. Now, let's see what different colors we might be able to spot. I see a orange animal here. This one's more like a red color. This one's got some yellow in the middle here. Hmm, I wonder what animal that is. Or even some really cool like purple animals down over here too. That's pretty cool. Now, are we looking at the same kind of animal in all in this whole habitat here behind us? Hmm. Do you recognize any? Maybe one that you might know already is these adorable ones here, the sea star. So the sea star, as their name implies, they have a star shape. And we're going to explore them a little bit more later on. Do you see any other animals that you may have noticed in here? I noticed these ones that look like they have sort of these wavy little tentacles here. That is a sea anemone. Hmm. Are there any others hiding in this little habitat we have here? What about down there? Do you see anything hiding under these rocks over here? Those are some animals called sea urchins. We're going to explore them next. And also, look up here in the corner and you might find hiding up here is an adorable little critter called a sea cucumber. So as we look at these different animals, do you notice any differences between them? I noticed that the colors, again, are very different. The sea cucumber almost has like a dark orange color. This urchin is like pinkish purple, right? And then some of these anemones are even different colors too. This one is a bright pink. Now, what else might you notice? Hmm, one thing I notice is those shapes too. The sea cucumber, well, as the name implies, kind of shaped like a cucumber. But the sea urchin is sort of round like a circle, which is different than that starfish or the sea star which has a star shape. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna dive in, explore some of these different animals because although they may look a bit different like you're seeing here, there are actually some things that some of these animals have in common, mainly between our sea stars, those spiky sea urchins, and a sea cucumber. So behind us here, we've sort of taken a deeper dive into this exhibit and you can see those anemones, those ones with the tentacles sort of flailing around here, but focus in on the sea stars now and see what differences you notice now. Hmm. Well, I'm noticing for sure 
even more different colors between these sea stars. There's some pink ones here. There's this one that's like orange and tan over here. Here. So what we're seeing here is sea stars already come in a whole bunch of different colors. That's for sure. Take a look here. We have these, these types of sea stars are called bat stars. Now, what differences do you notice here? Are you seeing even more colors than before, right? We have sort of a whitish colored one. We have some oranges and pinks. And this isn't even the whole color range that you can find these animals in. Sea stars are really amazing because they come in all sorts of different colors. Almost any color you can imagine, you will find a sea star in that color. Now, let's use this as an opportunity to actually gather our materials for our crafts because we are going to be making a sea star a little bit later on. So, if we go over to my camera, let's go over any things, materials that you might need if you'd like to build along with us. So, you have a couple different options. One thing, if you have it, you can use a paper plate. This round shape will just be helpful to get us started, but if you don't have a paper plate, that's okay too. You can also just get some paper. I have a white piece of paper here, but if you want to use a colored piece, that will work as well. It's up to you. The other thing that you will need are some scissors to cut out our sea star today. And then you, if you would like, can grab a whole bunch of different colors. Now, like I said, sea stars come in up just about every color you can imagine. And so that's going to be sort of the fun part, or at least the most fun part of the craft today, is that you get to use whatever colors you'd like and make your very own sea star. All right, now while we're over here too, let's explore some of these animals that we're going to talk about. Now, there is a big word that connects these animals that we have looked at, the sea urchin, the sea star, and the sea cucumber, and that word is echinoderm. Now, that's probably a new word, and don't worry, you don't need to, to worry about remembering that big sciencey word. Instead, what the key thing to remember is that we're going to be looking at spiny animals. Animals with very spiny skin. So, sea star is an echinoderm and it has spiny skin. But before we get to that in our craft, let's explore some other animals that have some really spiny skin. And I think we should start with that sea urchin. So let's see if my friend Jen can find us some pictures or videos of a spiny sea urchin. Awesome. So let's take a look here, scientists. Now, if you would like, I want you to take a second to just observe this sea urchin now that we've zoomed in on this spiny animal here. Think about some things that you might notice. If you're watching with somebody, feel free to share along with them. Share your observations. So what do we notice about our first spiny animal, the sea urchin. Hmm. Well, let's think about those shapes and colors first, just like we did before. I noticed that this one has a really cool purple color. In fact, this one's called a purple sea urchin. There you go. But what shapes do you see on this animal? Now, I know that we'll that that sea urchins are sort of like little spiny balls. They're circle shape, right? But do you see how all these, maybe you said lines, you see all these lines because you see these spines coming all around this animal, right? So if this is a member of our spiny animal group, you can see that definitely fits. Lots and lots of spines, right? Check out this close up here. So all those spines covering its whole body, hmm. I wonder why having spines or spikes all over your body would help this animal out in the ocean. Hmm. Can you think of any reasons why it would be helpful to have lots and lots of spikes on your body? Well, imagine you are a fish swimming around for a little snack, right? You're looking for some food, you're swimming around, and then you see this. Now, does this animal look like something that you might want to just bite right into with all these spines on it. Probably not, right? That might hurt our, hurt our mouth for sure. So having all these spines on their body can be very helpful for protecting themselves when they're out there in the ocean. So even though these might be really, really big, they might be small, 
those spines can still be very helpful. Now, what do you think it would feel like if you were to touch this animal? If you were to touch the spiny sea urchin? Hmm, any guesses? Do you think it might feel soft and squishy? Or maybe really spiny? Really pokey, perhaps. And the answer is pretty spiky, right? They're pretty pokey. But for some of these urchins, these spines are actually really little that if you come and visit us at the aquarium, you can actually touch these animals because even though they're kind of pokey, yeah, they're not so touch them. Yeah. Um, so you can see so, urchins are um, oh, that. That. Mm -hmm. the Now this is great to Otters will open them with their mouth and then use their or use their tools. Those spines are not only protected, but also can help them keep them in place so that... Yeah, we see urchins will give you a hug if you put your razor in your side. All right, very good. Yeah. 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 Let's see if my friend Jen can find us one of, oh, look at that, how fast, a sea cucumber. All right, my friend, so let's go ahead and make some observations here. What is different about the sea cucumber compared to the sea urchin, and what's the same? Hmm. Well, one thing I noticed that's different is this sea cucumber is a bright orange color, our sea urchin was more of a purple color. But what's the same? Hmm, I see some spines or some spikes all the way down the body of the sea cucumber. So once again, we're looking at one of these echinoderms, one of these spiny animals, right? What about the shape, though? How does this compare to the sea urchin? Hmm, well, the sea urchin was sort of like a spiky ball, right? But this one almost, almost more like a worm shape almost, right? It's sort of stretched out. Now, what's really cool about sea cucumbers, though, is their spines are a little bit of a trick. Because if you were to touch this animal, what do you think this one would feel like? Hmm. Well, I told you it's a little bit of a trick. And that's because if you were to touch this animal, even though they look really spiky, those spikes are not strong or pokey like the sea urchin. Instead, this whole animal is very, very squishy. So even though they look spiky, and maybe that's helpful for tricking some predators, sea cucumbers are very squishy and adorable animals. Now, actually, if Jen can bring us back to that last picture, I think there was a great thing to look for also. Look down here. Do you see all these little tubes on the bottom? So one thing that all these animals have also in addition to the spiny skin, are these feet called tube feet. And these little tube feet are sort of like little suction cups that they can use to crawl around. So that urchin that we saw moving around earlier, they have tube feet to crawl around, and so do sea cucumbers. So you won't find these really swimming around too much. No, you'll find them stuck onto the bottom or stuck onto rocks using those little tube feet to crawl around looking for some food. Now. The tube feet is what connects, is another thing that connects these spiny animals together. And so I think we should go to our final spiny animal and get started on our craft. And that is going to be the sea star. So let's make some quick observations about some sea stars. Because one of the things that is so special about them is not only do they come in different, but they also come in different sizes. And even though they might share that same shape of a star. There are some that have some differences too, which are really cool. For example, look at this one. This is a leather star. Now leather stars get that name because if you touch them, they're actually kind of smooth, more smooth than some of the other sea stars that would feel kind of rough and bumpy from that spiny skin. But you can see this one alone has a whole bunch of different colors all over its body. Now, do you see any of those tube feet, those sticky feet from this picture? Hmm. Well, on this top side, not really, but take a close look here. As it's lifting up its little, its little leg, its arm down there, you will see those same sticky feet, the same ones we saw on the sea cucumber. Very nice. 
All right, my friends, I think we should start getting our craft started and we'll explore some different sea stars along the way. So let's go ahead and head over to my camera and we'll get started on our craft today. So if you're starting with a paper plate, that works. But also, like I said, if you don't have a paper plate, but you just have some paper, that's okay too. If you're gonna start with a paper, the one thing that you wanna do is just make a circle. It doesn't need to be perfect, of course, just any sort of circle, and then you can cut that out. So we'll go ahead and start there. Now, if you want your C star to be really big, you can make your C star, you can make your circle really, really big. But if you want to make an adorable tiny little C star, kind of like those bat stars we saw earlier, you can do that too. So I'm going to go ahead and cut out my little circle here, because this way it's going to be a lot easier for us to get that really great C star shape. So let me cut out my circle here. And voila, a little circle. Now, of course, the sea star is not in a circle shape, right? But this is going to be a great way for us to, um, to get that nice shape. So now you have your circle on your paper. Or like I said, if you're using a plate and you don't need to cut, you can use that too. All right, so one thing that we need to talk about that also is on the bottom of a sea star is actually where their mouth is. So if we look at the underside of a sea star, you can see not only those two feet we were looking at, those little suction cups, but right in the center is where the mouth of a sea star is. So they can use those sticky feet to crawl along the rocks, looking for some food, and when they find something, they can bring it in to their mouth. Now, sea stars will move. They might not be the fastest animals in the ocean, but when they want to, those sticky tube feet can actually get them moving along the bottom like you see here. And once it finds something that it wants to eat, it can cover over it with its sticky tube feet and then use its stomach down on the bottom to bring in its food. And so, oh, this is a great picture. This sea star is actually in the middle of eating some delicious food. You can see that it's gonna take it into its mouth right there in the middle. So. Now that we know where the mouth is, we're going to use the mouth of the sea star to guide our shape. And so right in the middle of your paper or your plate, we're going to make a circle. That's going to be our mouth of the sea star. Now, now that we have our mouth of the sea star, we need to start building that star shape. And so the way we're going to do that is we're going to draw five points out to the edges. Now, again, it doesn't need to be perfect. I'm going to draw one out there. Draw one out there, down this way, down over here, and back over there. My one, two, three, four, my five arms. Now again, most sea stars have five arms, but there are some exceptions too. In fact, there's one really amazing sea star that has way, way more than five arms, and that's the amazing sunflower star here. As you can see, way more than five, right? So. Some sea stars will have even more than that, but most will have that five arm structure. Now, if you would like, if you want a challenge and you want to make yourself a sunflower star, you can also do that if you'd like. But for mine, we're going to keep it to our five pointed sea star. Okay, now that we have this drawn out here, what I'm going to do to help me win my cuts is I'm going to draw a little line that goes down this way and then back up to the next line, just like that, sort of like a a little V shape or a U shape. And I'm gonna do that between all of my points. Now it doesn't need to be perfect at all because when we cut, you can make some adjustments too. But this way it will help guide your C star. And we're gonna bring this one down here. And mine's a little chunky C star. I love it. But you can make yours look however you want. Now, some sea stars, like the leather star we have, kind of have a shape like that. But there are also some that have like really long, skinny arms too. They come in all different sizes and shapes, and that's why I think these stars are so wonderful. All right, let's begin cutting. So now I have my little guidelines, right? And again, you don't even need to stick to them too. That's just to help guide along the way. So I'm going to cut mine, and eventually we're going to be left with a little star shape. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, to the next one, and around. All 
and up, following that V shape. All right, so if we stop here, you can see we're starting to get those arms cut out there. Almost there. Just a couple more arms to cut out. Bring this one around, up and over. And then we only have two more arms to cut out. We're almost there. Up and over for this one. And last but not least, our fifth arm will be now cut out. Voila! An adorable little sea star. So, now that we have our sea star cut out, now this is where it gets really fun. Because now you can be as creative as you want. Because, let's take a moment as you're finishing cutting, and feel free, take your time. We won't go to our next step just yet. But I'm going to have Jen show us some different kinds of sea stars so that you can get some inspiration for maybe how you want to color yours. Now, this right here is called a brittle star. And brittle stars have this sort of these long, skinny arms that you can see here. Now, you still see that shape, right? There's still five of those arms. But they're much, much thinner and more wiggly than the sea stars that we saw earlier, too. And they move a little bit different, too. They sort of wiggle their way across the sand. A little bit different. Now let's see what other sea stars we can find too, so that we can explore maybe some different colors you might want to choose too. Earlier we saw that some stars come in pinks and reds, and even like, um, you know, they come in like dark brown colors. We even saw some that were really white, like almost like the really light, light pink. So all sorts of colors you might find, which is why our craft is so fun, because you can choose any you want, and chances are there's a sea star out there that looks just like the one that you're going to make. And so let's see what other ones we can find too, and then we'll get started on our coloring while you're finishing your colors. Now, here's the sunflower star that we saw earlier, but before, if you remember, we saw the bottom with all of those sticky feet, right? Right here. Now, this is going to be key, because on the bottom of our sea star, we're going to draw in all of these, well, not all of them. That's way too many to draw, right, of course. But we're going to draw some tube feet on this bottom side, and then, if we go back to the top side, you can see the top side, you'll just see those different colors. In this case, it's almost like a pink, but the exhibit is sort of making it look kind of blue too. But there are blue sea stars too. That's the fun part. So let's go ahead and go back over to my camera, and let's draw in those tube feet. So remember, on this side, we draw our little mouth. So this is where we're going to have our sticky feet, because this is like the bottom. And then this side will be the side that we would see if the, our sea star was crawling along. So let's go ahead and draw on our sticky feet. Now you can use whatever color you'd like. I'm just going to use a black marker here. And now remember, explorers, you can finish this afterwards too if you need some more time. There's no worries at all. But I'm going to draw some rows of tube feet going all the way down, just a whole bunch of little circles so that my sea star is able to stick onto those rocks because I want my sea star to be able to look for some food and crawl around when he's, when he's hungry and looking for a nice snack out in the ocean. Now, tube feet, the sea stars will have hundreds and sometimes even thousands of those tube feet. Kind of like when you saw in our sunflower star. It would take forever to count through all of those tube feet. And so for us, don't worry about drawing a thousand of these. You can even make your tube feet bigger too. But I now have my sticky feet and the mouth of my sea star right there in the middle. Perfect. Now my sea star can crawl around. It's ready to get on the move and, again, maybe look for some snacks out in the ocean. So now that we have this underside, you're welcome to color this part in as well. But for our time now, I'm going to flip over to our top side and draw the top. Now maybe we can see if Jen can find us another new star that might have um, some new appearances of the top side. Now, a lot of these, as you can see, you don't see the sticky feet on top, right? But the colors are really sort of up to your imagination. And some have multiple colors. Look at this one up here. It's sort of bright pink in the middle, light pink on the outside. This one is sort of has orange spots 
and the dark red color throughout. So it's really, it's, it's, it's up to you. You can make all sorts of different patterns and prints on the sea star that we're going to make today. All right, so let's go ahead and see. Maybe we can look at one more other type and then we'll get started on our coloring. While you're finishing up your little tube feet now, we can look at one more new star together and then we'll get started on the next step. Now look at this. This sea star has a really cool pattern on its top side too that you can see here. Now this one is sort of like a light brown color all the way through. I think it looks adorable, right? But this gives you an idea of some patterns that you might want to draw into yours too. It's all up to you. So let's go ahead and go back to our star that we're going to color together. I think I'm going to make mine, hmm, I kind of want mine to have some spots. But then I think I'm going to go with like an orange color. I'm going to give mine a bunch of different colored spots though. I'm even going to do, so I'm just going to start drawing. And again, you can make yours however you'd like, but I'm going to draw mine with some of these spots. I want to do spots all the way through, just sort of scattered around all the arms of my sea star. Mm -mm -mm. Why not? Let's add some blue onto mine too. So I'm going to do some blue dots. So I'm adding some blue dots onto mine. You can also do some stripes too. That might be a cool one. Some stripes or other patterns. It's all up to you. In fact, I think I'm going to do that. I'm going to take my orange color now, and I'm going to kind of draw some squiggly lines going through, down and through my sea star to sort of help it with, to give it some more of that color. So put this underneath. It'll draw on the camera. That would not be good. I'm going to draw some squiggly lines just going all the way through my sea star. Now, I'm hopefully excited to see what sea star designs you come up with at home. All right. So now we have some squiggly lines on my sea star going down through its body there. And then, if you'd like, let me see if I can find some other tools. Maybe I can draw in, do another color for our spots. Why not? Add as much color as we can into this, and then we'll wrap up for today. So I'll add some more just orange spots kind of scattered through my sea star. All right, scientists. Now, like I said, even though we're going to be ending our program here shortly, that doesn't mean that your craft has to end. In fact, I'd encourage you to keep on going and add as much detail as you can. Yours doesn't need to look like mine. You can choose all sorts of colors and patterns because, as you saw today, sea stars come in a whole bunch of different patterns and colors and even shapes too. Now, what we did learn with our craft is that the top side of a sea star it's going to look very different than the bottom side, right? Because your top side might have all of those colors or spikes or patterns that we looked at, but your bottom is where you're going to find the mouth of a sea star and all of those sticky feet. Now, I didn't have time to color in my bottom here, but feel free to add in color too, because sea stars will even have different colors on their bottom side too. Check out this right here. This is that same star we looked at earlier, the bat star, where they come in all different colors. But check this out. On the top side, right, all those different pinks and oranges that we saw, but this is actually the bottom side because we're looking sort of underneath the sea star and looking at sticky feet. And you can see completely different color on the bottom too. It's much lighter on the bottom side. So feel free if you'd like to add some color there too. So explorers, let me go ahead and grab my little craft and we'll wrap up um, what we have done today together. So. Today we explored the echinoderms, otherwise known as the spiny animals. And so we took a quick peek at our sea urchins, as well as our so this one, this adorable spiky ball, the sea urchin. We also looked at a sea cucumber, right? Different shape, but still with those spiny skin. And then our final member that we looked at today, which we did our craft, was the sea star. 
And so the sea star have those same sticky feet on the bottom like we drew in, a mouth right there in the middle. And then because these are some of my favorite animals, because they just come in so many different colors. There's so many. We only looked at a couple here. It seems like we looked at tons and tons of sea stars, but there's even more to explore. And so that's what I would challenge you to do today, scientists, is to keep on exploring, see what other types of sea stars or other animals that you can find, and feel free to finish up our craft that we started making together here today. So, explorers, I want to thank you so much for joining us. We're going to throw that number and the email up on screen one more time. So if you have any lingering questions or things you would like to share, you're welcome to use the text line 562-286-1838 or use the email down below, live at lbaop.org. And if you happen to making crafts along with us today, we would love to see them. So, explorers, thank you so much for joining us. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. We'll see you next time.